Hi, I'm Liliana Partita, the nutritionist at the Center for New Medicine. And I wear many hats in this clinic, and one of the things that I do here is work with our patients on an emotional level. Uh, we feel that every uh, disorder within the body has an emotional component to it. And so what we would like to do is share some of our views, and hopefully um, it'll, it'll be uh, comforting to you in regards of the journey that patients take when they're with us. And we want to look at our patients as whole. Right when they walk in the door, regardless of how sick they are, we need to see them as whole because their soul is never broken. Their soul doesn't understand their disease. Their soul doesn't understand anger or any negative emotion. It's in the mind, which rests in the ego. So we want to talk about these things because oftentimes these tough topics are very touchy. Uh, we all know we're going to make our transition. Nobody wants to think that they're going to make it <laughs> sooner than they want to. And uh, oftentimes when you're given a diagnosis, it's, it's kind of like you're playing a game and all of a sudden you got stuck with a hot potato and you're standing there with it. What do I do with it? And whether than, what, rather than resisting your journey, what we want you to do is embrace it and really look at the pearl of wisdoms of any suffering that you might have so that it could be your passion and your purpose to launch you forward to the rest of your journey. And so today we have Dr. Jolly, who is a genius and he comes from such a heart place uh, center and we are so happy to have him uh, on our team and he as the hyperbaric chamber and again we can't live without oxygen right and, and it just we can't live without uh, the words that he's going to tell us today as, as well because it gives us that oxygen and again that sense of peace in regards to uh, this journey of transition and Dr. Jolly is going to talk about the oldest uh, religious language uh, Arama Ar Aramaic I don't know if I said that correctly, Dr. Jolly can correct me on that one. Um, but we were talking the other day and I thought, oh my goodness, this man is just a jewel of information and we really want to tap into his genius. So Dr. Jolly, talk a little bit about Aramaic and just some of your background. You were telling me that you had been with the Pope as well. So if you could just share a little bit uh, to our audience in regards to just a little of your story. Sure, I'd be very, very happy to. Um, Aramaic is an ancient language. It was the language that Jesus Christ spoke and Aramaic is a very definitive language. When you translate you get utter and complete meaning. For example, the word for death in Aramaic is mut. And if you translate mut, this is exactly what it means. To be present elsewhere to be present elsewhere. It's not about going out of existence. It's not about suffering. It's not about anything but being present elsewhere. And that's something very, very important for us. And that brings up another whole thing that we really need to understand. When we are created in the womb of our mother, we are created as eternal beings, period. Once we come into existence, we never go out of existence. We do, however, we do lose the capability of using this tool, the body. The body doesn't last forever. We as human persons last forever. From the time we are created, conceived, forever. It never goes away, ever goes away. It's very important to remember that. So that as we live, we live knowing that we will continue to live forever, always. And that's very, I think, insightful for most of us because we don't even think of that reality. So would it be safe to say that um, our spirit is what uh, animates the body? The spirit animates the body like you animate your car. Because without you behind the wheel of that car and having the key to that car, car can't do a thing. So when that jalopy is old and useless, then the spirit moves out of the body and just transitions from this dimension to the other dimension. That is our goal. That is our goal. Our goal is to be eternal beings. And when we're finished with this tool, then we go into a state of freedom. That's what we must believe because that's the way it is. And it's forever. See, there, we get all 
screwed up with time. Time, time, time. And we worry about this minute and that minute and this is going to go away. And no, there is nothing but eternity. That's all there is. And we need to really buy into that. I am really lucky because I spend time in the Vatican. I spend time with two popes. I, I was around this whole world of people who thought in eternal terms. And man, it makes a really big difference. It makes a really big difference. It makes a huge difference in just having that faith that um, this body just borrowed and that we are here to live our best self as long as that we have to live, right? Even if you have a diagnosis, it's not to steal one moment because you're in fear of what could happen, but to live each moment, as I always say, as your last moment. Well, it's kind of like if you have a lovely car and you love your car and your car serves you and your car does a lot of good things, and then all of a sudden your car gets wrecked and it's gone. You are the animator of the car and the car is not there anymore. Well, that's the way life is. This tool isn't here eternally, but the animator of this tool is eternal. From the moment of conception, forever we live. Now, what kind of um, encouragement would you give family members uh, who have lost a loved one and they're going through a grief in regards of that physical emptiness of their loved one. And what, would, how, what, what kind of advice would you give uh, someone that is in pain? Well, I think first of all, we have to let them feel their pain. We have to let them feel their pain. We have to be compassionate with them. And I think we need to educate them. We need to educate them about what, what is death? What is death? And what is life? And what are we here for? And we really need to talk about that. And we need to encourage people and have them understand that all of these things that happen to us as human persons are supposed to happen because that's what happens. And we must remember that we are on an eternal journey. We never stop that journey. You, you, you driving an automobile you can keep driving the car and it can fall apart and you get another one and another one and another one. Well, we have to understand that our spirit has to animate us. And the spirit never goes away. That is who we are. It's how we are. And we run our lives by using the brain, which animates the body, to do good and wonderful things. And that's how we create happiness, it's how we create fulfillment, and we need to support that in each other. And it's not easy when somebody is in love with someone and they've been with someone for years, and all of a sudden they're threatened with the loss of this person. We need to understand that, hey, there's a lot of beauty in this whole process. We have to understand that. We have to teach that. We have to. We have to talk about it in, in, in group with great joy and love and concern. Talk like that all the time. So would it be safe to say that our loved ones has just, I like to look at it like this, it's that they've just gone into the next room before us. That's exactly right. right. And that when we make our transitions, yeah. those, those loved ones that we have an association and attachment to, they meet us there so that we have a sense of comfort in regards of making our transition. Oftentimes, uh, I know my mother and my father, uh, both when they were experienced, their, their time uh, was very close. They were talking a lot about uh, their, their brothers uh, that had passed on before them or their sisters or even their mother that was coming to visit them. Yeah. And so they were very, you know, it was very vivid in regards of, oh, yes, you know, so-and-so was here yesterday. And, you know, we're just thinking, okay, we, we understand this in our culture. We understand that they're, they're getting visitations. So we kind of, how, how we have, I have always looked at it, is that now the only reason um, that we can't see them is because we are in a dense molecular structure. And as Dr. Jolly says, they're limitless. They don't, they're not bound to mass anymore. So we can call upon them anytime we need them. And so this is kind of the process of, of acceptance in regards to grieving in a very healthy way. I kind of like the ocean, you know, we're feeling pretty good, we're on top, and then all of a sudden it crashes the ocean, we're not feeling so terrific. But as Dr. Jolly said, it's so important for us to be able to uh, 
not suppress those emotions, not be so stoic behind them, allow ourselves to break down, allow them to us to really feel them, and then just look at the gratitude of all that they brought into our world. They will continue to live through our eyes. So the more joy we have, the more uh, adventures that we get, they get to experience that as well because they're in our tissue, they're in our RNA, our DNA replication. And so I always say, just call upon them as if they were still here. In fact, even create some sort of symbolic thing. When my mother passed on, uh, there was lots of hummingbirds always around. So I identified mother, my mother with a hummingbird. And so many, I, I even had a kitchen fly into my hummingbird. My mother was an extraordinary chef and let me catch it. And I thought, okay, mom, I know you're here, right? And so again, we just make it like, you know, they're, they're just they're there. We can't see them, but we can certainly feel and talk to them. And what do they say? The angels are so unemployed, they're just waiting for us to ask for their service, right? You see, what you're saying is, is overwhelming and beautiful and very, very true. And when you look at what you just said, people who are living in spirit, or at least acknowledging spirit, yeah. we need to acknowledge spirit because we exist in spirit. So has anybody ever poised the question to where is elsewhere? Yes. Elsewhere is in spirit. When we are when we are born with the body, we are given a physical presence, and that physical presence is this and that and all of these bodies, and we use these tools as ways to work our way through this material life, the material life. But nothing material, nothing material lasts. We're not, nothing. Nothing. It all crumbles and falls away. Good. It's wonderful. You know, it's it's an openness to be able to talk to and gain the help. We live. We have a wonderful opportunity. We interact with each other, and we've got to learn to eliminate fear. Yes. Fear is an evil demon from hell which must be eradicated. Yeah, I'd like to look, think of fear as an inverted faith. And so one of the things that Dr. Jolly is bringing up how important it is to have our roots anchored in our faith. Mm. And therefore, you know, we have to say, well, how do we nourish that? And it's spiritual food and it's not done when we are, you know, in a crisis mode. It's done every day. We eat every day. We exercise every day. Well, how are we feeding the spirit? And so this is what we try to teach our patients here is to really reconnect with, you know, with, with, with their, their spirit, with their higher, higher self and the mindset of, yes, we are all eternal and we should not fear the next transition. We should be, have childlike wonderment and curiosity behind it. And I had a wonderful experience um, and my niece, um, she died about two years ago. From, she was struggling with cancer for seven years, but she taught me such dignity in dying mm. and it was so beautiful I had gotten there about 15 minutes uh, uh, right after she had passed and you know we're a large family and uh, we knew she was having difficulties so we were all coming uh, to celebrate her birthday so we we're kind of gonna come bump one by one and then they asked us no come right away because she's not breathing very well and so forth and um, so when I got there not only was this an incredible collective amount of sorrow that I just walked into this wave of energy, right? It was just like, whoa, uh, you could feel it, right? And, and this is what's the beautiful thing, beautiful thing about your emotions is feel them. Allow yourself to completely be unleashed, right? You can heal so much better. Mm -hmm. But when I was talking to, uh, she was lying in the bed still and her, her son was laying next to her and her daughter was there too and her, and her sister was holding her hand. And, and, and she, she said, and the, and the son said, my mom said to me, the angels are here and I want to go back home. Do you see them? And he looked at her and he said, I see them, mom. It's okay to go back home. And she looked and she smiled and she closed her eyes and she was gone. That's how much faith she had in her next destination. And I thought, oh my gosh, she taught me such dignity in dying. Well, if we don't acknowledge it, we deny it. Yes. And and that's, I think, very sad. Yeah, I agree. I <laughs> really sad. agree. And so one of the things that we want to be able to do is we want to be uh, a, 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 a place where you can have a reservoir. And so whether you're going through a, a situation yourself, whether it's death, whether it's living, whether it's 
and stress of the way the world is right now, we want to be able to create a place of vulnerability that you can share some of your feelings that maybe you don't want to share with other people because you might feel that they might stress you out. So you can send in questions to us, we can answer them, but we are going to continue on with these little vignettes and so that we can, as we educate with nutrition and how to live, we also want to educate, educate you on how to you know, live each breath, to, to be in gratitude every moment. And we all recognize our journey here. We are all, you know, we all feel that we have been given a wonderful gift and that's to be able to stay steadfast in seeing you as a whole person regardless. You said it all. Now all we have to do is put it into action. Yes. Because it works. It really, really does work. And the bottom line of it all is we're here for a little while. We have a, a job to do. And the job is to learn. It's to learn how to love. Start talking to your loved ones. We are incredible beings. Mm. And we have a lot of power. And most of the power is going to come from our faith. So there's a question, how do we help our patients living in fear? Uh, well, I always suggest to them, get out of the future and get into the present moment. Because the future is what ifs. And what ifs are very scary. If I've got a peripheral here, it's kind of gray. But if I see it here, I know that if there's a car coming at me, I'll be smart enough to move to the right-hand side. So I always say, why do we choose to... Uh, cause us more pain than we need to. There's enough suffering that we have for today. Why be worrying about tomorrow? And this is what I tell my patients who oftentimes, when they have young children, is that they look at their children and in their mind, even when they're sitting there with their children, they're thinking, I may not see that child grow up. I may not see that child get married. I may not see, I may not. And what are they doing? They're stealing that very moment from them in the future of what ifs. Now children are sponges. They feel, they might, you, you might think that they're not aware, but our body holds a record of emotion and they will pick up these emotions. So if you think, you know, you're not telling, you know, this, you know, family member because they're too young, they already know that something is going on collectively within the household. So it's to give them confidence by having strong faith and remembering that, um, like Dr. Dolly says, oh, we're just going to be somewhere else. Once my daughter told me, she said, well, mom, when you die, she was a little girl. She said, will you still be able to drive me to work, to school? And I said, well, you know, essentially I won't be physically there, but I'll guarantee you, I'll be watching you over you. Right. And it was so cute. She was like only seven years old because, you know, in Japan, they teach permanence at a very impermanence at a very early age. So oftentimes a lot of cultures are not afraid of dying because they know this isn't the last resort they're going to get to go to. Amen. I have something very interesting here. Um, a, a, a woman whose husband died came to one of my grief groups, and she wrote me a letter. I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I'm going to read. I'm going to read about uh, eight or ten lines. Is okay. That all right. Sure. Dear Father Donald, how would I know this was the perfect grief group for me? Maybe divine intervention. This is a bittersweet last day with the grief support group, and it's time for me to move forward with my life. In this journey of grief, I want to thank you for your guidance to accept what is and have the courage and strength to heal. You have been a visionary mentor and a compassionate leader who has dedicated your life to helping others. I appreciate everything that you taught us. Your presence and the group have provided me with supportive place to bear my feelings. That's very important. To each person in our group, thank you for the pleasure of knowing you. Donald, not only are you an effective facilitator, but you have shown yourself to be a most loving and caring person. I want you to remember that this is very important with each other when you're dealing with someone in crisis very supportive. It's very, very important to be supportive. You are calm, relaxed, humorous, self-deprecating, knowledgeable, fun. You have a great smile and wonderful stories. What a kind heart and soft voice. You reach out to everyone and encourage on their way.
to their journey. This is what we have to do. We have to remember we're on our way to a journey. And I think it's extremely important to do so. I have a funny thing here. I owned a house one time. I used to be a banker, a very successful banker. I was the president of a big bank. And I lived in a big mansion in Hollywood. And now, you know, I'm 80 years old now, so I was like, I'm, what, 32 or three years old. And, and the headline of the newspaper, this was from the Los Angeles Times, says, Priest witnesses amazing events as frenzy ghost drives terrified owner out of Hollywood mansion. And then here's this whole article about my house being haunted. <laughs> and it was haunted. And I lived in it. I had a chapel built in the house. And nobody ever screwed around with the chapel uh, except once in a while the candles would light. I don't know how they lit, but they lit. And other people would see them light up. So I want you to know that weird things do happen. And that's okay. Don't worry about it. That's right. Exactly. We stay steadfast. So I hope you guys enjoyed t today's session. And know that we are here for you uh, from, from our hearts to your hearts. And um, let's have this journey be a great journey from start to finish.